Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how I'm going to make some wire wrapped bookmarks. So I've been doing a lot more reading and finding that I really would enjoy, uh, you know, some intentional bookmarks, not just, you know, old receipts or things that I find laying near me around the house. Um, so what I'm using is some 16 gauge and this is non-tarnished copper wire. You could use bare copper, but I have no experience in whether or not when it tarnishes, if it's going to leave marks on your pages, which may be something that you don't mind and it may be something that you want to avoid if at all possible. I'd like to avoid it, which is why I'm using um, the enameled copper, but you could just as easily also use aluminum wire, though it may leave a slight like grayish, grayish oxidation residue as well. Um, again, I don't have a whole lot of experience on this, so if you have used metal bookmarks before, please let me know. I just wanted to, you know, make some quick gifts for myself and uh, for, I have quite a few friends who enjoy reading that I thought it might be a nice, quick, inexpensive, but heartfelt gift for them. Now I've drawn up some different designs. You can see here, uh, I'm just using Procreate, which is, like really any digital drawing app would use for would work for this you could even just draw it on paper uh, and then take a picture and be able to resize that way and that way you can make a really big bookmark or you can zoom out and use that same template that we've drawn up to make cute little charms for earrings or pendants in your jewelry work so um options are always very very nice so i had some different thoughts of just like basic shapes like a leaf I haven't quite figured out how to do a puppy paw yet but we might be able to figure that out and I just have them all um kind of drawn up here let me see if I can't there we go get them unlayered a little bit excellent so I wanted to make because I have different books that I'm reading all at once about some of them are about homestead stuff some of them are gardening specifically some of them are finance or home improvement which is what I would do a money sign one for because I like to kind of keep my head in the right spot of where I'm going um, but I really want to do the treble clef the star the mushroom the heart the butter like I don't know let's see how many of these we can make because I want to make all of them. <laughs> so, um, again, with the 16 gauge wire, you could use an 18 gauge, but I wanted something that would give us some option to be able to hammer it nice and kind of flat and uh, 18 or 16 gauge. You could even go so small as 20 gauge if you're making this for like a very small bookmark because they don't have to be huge, y'all. So, let's start with a heart just because that I think is going to be our simplest. Now, tools that we'll be using for this are our nylon jaw pliers, some mandrel jaw pliers, though you could just use pens or knitting needles or different things like that. Also, round nose pliers are super handy. Either of these can be used for making spirals and curves in our wire. I like my flat nose pliers that have a really narrow tip, that way I can get some nice tight bends. And then, of course, wire snips. And let me grab my... There you are. And block. So hammer and block for hammering this out. I like this. This is a 13 ounce jeweler's hammer with interchangeable heads. And I really like it because at this point in my creative journey, I don't do a whole lot of hammering. So I haven't had the need to have like a bunch of different hammers, but by having the different heads that I can swap out, it gives me some of the options without having to have like a whole collection of hammers. So let me set these works in progress on off to the side. And I'm going to snip for our first heart. Let's go ahead and do eight inches of wire and see what size that makes for us. And now also you can choose to use a file to, um, shape down the tips of your wire because if you see here let's zoom in real real far if we hammer this while it is in this flat shape we're going to get a very squared off end 
Whereas if I come through, and just like if you follow along with our wire wrapping master classes on um, the lesson where we covered ear hooks, it's the same technique that we're using to just round down those sharper corners of the cylinder of wire, those blunt edges from where we cut it. And it probably doesn't look like much, but it'll translate out pretty nice whenever we get to hammer in. So I'm going to do that on both sides. And again, on that tapered edge, because with our flush cutters, it's got a flat side and a pinched side. So I want to come in and snip nice and flat. And now we're just going to come through and file this down. I'm doing this in real time with you guys because I want you to have a very accurate idea of how much time goes into this project. Because oftentimes, as a crafter, if I start my day and I'm planning my day out, um, I'll be like, yeah, well, I can get this project done in like two hours. And this one's only going to take me like 15 minutes. And then, you know, but sometimes that project that was only supposed to take two hours or even just 15 minutes can end up taking all day just because I didn't have a realistic idea of maybe what tools and materials I needed on hand. You know, maybe I was like, oh, I don't have, um, a metal file, but maybe I can do it with an emery board. So then it takes twice as long. So it's again, just... It can be really useful, I think, to know um, how much time goes into a project. So, yep, we're still at 8 inches, so I'm going to find the 4 inch mark and line, sorry, I didn't mean to be out of frame, line my pliers up, give a really nice 90 degree bend, and I'm going to bend just a little tighter than that. So there you can kind of see in relation to the right angle on my little grid here. That's the angle that we're working with. So now I'm gonna come through and just pressing with my thumbnail, I wanna give a little bit of an out curve, just cause I like that shape. You could leave your heart straight sided, but I like just a little bit of out curve. And now I'm going to take my round nose pliers and grabbing pretty close to the tip of the wire and pretty close to the tip of the pliers. It doesn't have to be super close because otherwise you'll run into like how you're seeing and my pliers are slipping off. But I just want to practice. Well, you could practice on some scrap wire, but I just want to make a nice twisted around spiral. And with bookmarks, you can make them much more wide open and airy than necessarily what I might for like earrings or a pendant or something that would be worn and that I'd be worried about getting tangled and things. These will be safely enclosed in a book. So, wow, those came out really different. <laughs> okay, so if one spiral came out much tighter than another, that's okay. These things happen. It's art. And sometimes a design is just going to be more organic um, than another. But we can always tweak things around. And then we can also bring this in a little tighter so we could have lopsided hearts. We could bring this side in even tighter. So there we are. We could use this just as it is. And the way that we would do this is we would just open up our book and you can slide the little heart down just like that. And now we have our bookmark. Now that's displacing quite a bit of the um, page and I don't want there to be like little kinks. And truly, probably if you're very particular about your books, you'll want to use the thinnest bookmark that you can. So loud noises, I'm actually going to be like muting it. That way uh, the hammering isn't like deafening, but just using a steel block and a rubber base with a um, chasing hammer head in my 13 ounce hammer.
So to hammer, I went ahead and separated my swirls out from each other just a little bit um, so that the wire isn't overlapping because that will make pinched and overly narrow spots. But now we have some of this really nice hammer texture and you can do this. The brand of wire that I'm using is ParaWire. The label came off of this one. But here's the same wire uh, in 28 gauge, but I used, again, the non-tarnished stuff. Links for everything will be down in the video description below. But now, let's test this out on our book. So it's just a little thinner, but I think that'll be okay. And the thinner of a wire that you use, the less spread that you'll get, but also the less displacement that you'll get in your book um, from the pages. But again, if you're very particular, um, just using a thin sheet of paper for a bookmark might be the way to go if you want to keep your books as pristine as possible. But we're making, <laughs> we're making book wire bookmarks today. So we have our heart. Now let's see if we can do a treble clef. And again, here you should be able to see. Let's see if zooming in helps. How it, see how it's kind of rounded there on the tip? No little scratchy points for snagging the pages or anything like that. So I am going to pull off, let's see, 10 inches of 16 gauge copper wire. And I'm going to go ahead and do my tips. And again, if there's a pinched tip, I want to go ahead and snip it. But uh, the para wire, I can hammer quite vigorously um, and not have to worry about the enameling chipping or anything like that. So uh, if you want different colors or things like that. That would be a pretty cool way that you can use, like, uh, the vintage bronze is probably my favorite, like, brown tone color uh, of their wire selection on parawire.com. There we go, coming through. Now, we do also sell some parawire on our website as well, but the parawire website itself has a very expansive color and gauge selection, as well as shapes as wire, shapes of wire. This isn't sponsored, I just really love their work. Okay, so now treble clef time. So what was this, 10 inches? <clears throat> yeah. So let's make our first spiral. Just grabbing my wires and my pliers and bringing this around. And now we could just use our nylon gel pliers to just smush, smush, smush that a little bit, but they're also great for gripping and shaping and so this is going to be going off to the left and I'd like this to come up oh let's do three inches no let's do two and a half so at the two and a half mark and that's from the tip of the spiral there I am going to do a right angle bend and then we can shape this around just pressing with our thumb to make a nice curve. So I just kind of run my thumbnail along that inside edge, applying a little bit of pressure with my first finger. And so the thing is with this one is we are gonna be having a little bit of overlap, but that's okay. So that comes down. Now you may want to use something, like this is a little bead jar, you could use a pill container or um, a spice bottle, just anything, a lipstick tube, um, the handle of a cooking utensil or like a, a screwdriver handle, just anything round, like <laughs> cylindrical to shape around. So that lets us get a nice little shape there and especially if you're doing this and wanting to make like earrings or something having the same size mandrel to accomplish the same size bends and curves can really really be helpful in um oops in helping your designs to be similarly sized and shaped and consistent 
So we're just coming around with the rest of that spiral. And now from here, because I don't want to have to worry about pinching my wires on each other, I'm just bending this one back a little bit. <clears throat> and now we're gonna lay this down and let's go ahead and get to hammering. So I'm just gonna set the wire like this, kind of out of the way, and then we're going to start hammering. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to bump the tripod so much, but now we can lay this down like that. We were able to do the hammering on both pieces without them pinching into each other. And now I'm going to just hold this down and I'm going to hammer, avoiding this cross section. I'm just going to hammer and get a nice little bit of spread up on this section. So now you can see some places I got a whole lot of spread, but I kind of personally really like that organic, uh, crazy look, especially the ultra smushy over here. But also you could do it just a little bit more gently, but this also demonstrates, I think, quite effectively. There is no enamel flaking or anything, even on this wider spread which if I hammered much more beyond this, it would start to flake, but there's only so much beading you can expect wire to take before it starts showing some wear. So there is another little bookmark. Let's see how that fits into our book. So now we can, this just slides right on in. And it holds just like that. I think that is great. So now let's do one more design. Um, do we do... Let's do a mushroom. I don't know if I want to do that mushroom or if I want to do that mushroom. With this one. Let's do that one. Where it has, you can see... It follows a little spiral and then comes up and around and down. So now I'm going to go ahead. I have not done this mushroom design before, so I'm going to give myself a full 12 inches. Just because you can always trim extra wire off, but it's kind of difficult to uh, add it in whenever you're trying to do just one solid design like this. Okay, so we will begin with shaping the tips as we do. I almost forgot. Also, the hammering really does help the piece to hold its shape. So if you're using an aluminum craft wire or something, hammering it out can help, especially even if you just use the nylon head side of your hammer, it can really help to work harden your wire and make it be a little stiffer uh, and stay in its shape a bit more. Okay, so there's the little spiral for the inside of the mushroom. stem like that and now we can have this piece come up and we'll do our little bend right there you could use your flat nose pliers or round nose pliers the flat nose will get a sharper bend the round nose will get a cur more curved bend so 
just whichever you think your preference might be. I think for attaching to the stem, I'm going to use my flat nose. And then here for the mushroom uh, cap itself, I'm going to use the 6mm ba barrel on my mandrel pliers. And that just gives me something to bend around. And now I'll be able to get the other side of my mushroom to be consistent because I'll be using that 6mm as well. And then I'm going to use the biggest barrel on my pliers for the tip of the mushroom which oh no I went in way too soon but that's okay we can make this guy kind of shaped a little bit more fantastically so we'll just bend that out and then I want the tip of the cap to be happening kind of in that center line so I'm just gonna bring this in and now that's lined up with our little cap or the base of the stem. So that's bent around now. We can come in, bend with our thumbnail, and then we're going to use that six millimeter barrel. And I'm going to try to line it up to where they're both kind of on that same plane, bending it around. So one side's up a little higher than the other, that's okay. And again, this is a soft enough wire that we can come in and kind of tweak things around a little bit, shape it out, and if we decide we want that wire, that bend down a little further, we can do that. Because trial and error is going to help us to figure out what it is that we're looking for. So it's not exact, but you know, I'll take it. <laughs> So coming in here, placing our flat nose pliers, bending down, and kind of splaying out just a little bit. I now want to come through here, and I'm just going to shape this wire around this bottom edge here. Now we could, in the design, I had just kind of cut it off right there mentally, but I think I'm going to come through and use up the rest of this wire that we've added by doing a second layer. So I'm just adding a bend, so that it'll nestle up there, bending this around, because I'm charging my attack. There we go. Bending this around. So we almost could have used some more wire. And then from here, Oh, I never, I never shaped this end. Let's go ahead and snip that. I'm going to set my tablet off to the side so I don't accidentally use it as an anvil. Because you never know. It's better to not take chances. And just filing that tip. Because if what I'm doing right here ends up not working, I can still just clip it where I was going to originally. So now I'm going to take this end and I'm going to shape it around. Whoops. Oh, sometimes that happens where your pliers slip and it pinches your wire. And whenever that happens and I'm using like sterling or bare copper, I'll go ahead and smush and file it down. Whenever it happens on something enameled like this, I just snip it off and go back because it, it'll never be quite the same but I'm just shaping around. There we go. Excellent. I'm gonna try to make that spiral a little bit more centered. <laughs> but that does have that effect of having a little bit of overlap. Let's see how it sits in the book. So we want to make sure that we have the wire on the right side of the paper. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I love it. 
<laughs> so it gives us a little bit of a full mushroom on one side and like a half a mushroom on the other. So maybe that could be an indicator to let yourself know what page you're on. So let's go ahead and hammer this one out. So these are how three of our wire bookmarks have come out. Please let me guy or please let me know if you guys would be interested in more wire bookmark tutorial, um, like more designs in another tutorial. I don't know why words are so hard today, but here we are. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below, and um, you can sign up for our free newsletter at backtoearthcreations.com where we let you know whenever we have new tutorials, shop updates, and um, live streams and different things like that. All the different links for to support the channel are down in the video description as well as tools and materials and all of our contact info. So I do hope that this was helpful to you guys. Thank you so much to all of our channel members and Happy Crafter Club members for making our free tutorials possible. And I will see you all next time. So until then, you guys, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>